Today on the Philly Tall Podcast, we discuss Jalen Hurts. Every time I hear this guy speak, I grow more and more and more confident that the Eagles will get a Super Bowl under this man's watch. Plus, Peter King says one thing about the Eagles and Nolan Smith and also says that there are NFL teams that like Gibbs over B. John Robinson. This is Philly Talk with Philly Mike. Talking sixes in the bird game, that's our life. Competition, we ain't scared, yeah, that's what we like. Win or lose, you know we showing up and we gon' fight. Uh, you see, we strive for the sky every day that go by. And every single week we scream and fly, eagles fly. This is Philly Talk with Philly Mike, yeah. This is Philly Talk with Philly Mike, yeah. What is going on, everybody? I go by Philly Mike, and this is the Philly Tall Podcast, and today we got a lot to get into, but before we do that, Eagle Nation, help your boy out and hit that like button. Y'all been killing it. Subscribe and ding the bell so you know when we go live, drop videos, all that good stuff. Now, Jalen Hurts continues to impress. Money is nice, but championships are better. But listen to the question that was asked of him, and then he came up with this response. You had a purpose before anybody had an opinion. Now you're the highest paid player in the league. I mean, how satisfying is that for you? Yeah, I think uh, money is nice. Championships are better. That contract. Simple. Money is nice. Championships are better. And you got this guy leading your franchise with a dynamic offensive line, wide receiving core, a tight end who's top three, top five in the game, and who knows what is going to be added in this 2023 draft. People talking about JSN, they're still talking about Gibbs, they're still talking about Bijan, and we'll get into what Peter King said, but Jalen understands that he needed to take this type of contract. Eagles quarterback Jalen Hurts was asked why he didn't want a fully guaranteed contract. Hurts went on to say, when you look at the best teams in the league, it takes a village. Hurts added, that they have something special building in Philly. And, of course, James Palmer is going to say, money is nice, but championships are better. I totally agree. Jalen Hurts just gets it. Oh, but he's the highest-paid quarterback in the NFL. How is he taking a a team-friendly deal? Y'all not doing your homework. Not Eagle fans, but the Cowboy and Giant and Commanders and a strange Vikings fan and a Lions fan. Like, These NFC East and NFC foes talking about how could he be taking a team-friendly deal? We don't got to explain it to you. But as you watch the Eagles add this free agent and this free agent in the next five, four years, you will slowly understand that between Howie Roseman, Jalen Hurts, and our coach Nick Sirianni, we got this on lock. We got this on lock. Now let's get into some of the Peter King news, right? I said, "Uh uh-oh. I'm not going to give you my take on this right away, but Dove Kleiman update, a few NFL teams like Alabama, Jameer Gibbs over Texans, B. John Robinson in this 2023 draft per Peter King. How do y'all feel about that? Now, under this, a couple people who follow me on Twitter and also on YouTube say, I've been saying it. Gibbs Is the Alvin Kamara clone. He's more of a speedster. Better with hands for uh, the additional help at the wide receiver position. And just, you know, Jalen has another target. Bijan is the special cut back, Saquon Barkley, break tackle guy. But with our offensive line, we don't necessarily need that. And I'm not just saying the Eagles are one of these teams. I'm not saying they are or not. Peter King is saying that there are a few teams that think Gibbs is more valuable and or better suitor for them over B. John Robinson. I still say there's something about B. John Robinson that I see is so special. I do believe his game can translate. Like, he only stops on a dime and cuts back and does that LaShawn McCoy stuff in the backfield for Texas because he had to. Where Alabama's star running back, Gibbs, can just hit one cut and go because their offensive line gave them that ability right he, they, the lane was open where Bijan had to create on his own I think that when you look at sturdiness and just IQ I think Bijan's game is going to translate will it be for the Philadelphia Eagles I doubt it 
I've been a big supporter of the people who like Bijan. I understand it. He's a very talented football player. I just don't think Howie is going to do it. And yes, I've made videos about it because there's things that have been thrown out there, whether it's articles or things Howie said or Jeff Flory, that makes me think, okay, he might be really open to it. But being open to something and doing it are two different things. I got to see it to believe it. Now, Gibbs is in a different situation. He could be there at the back end of the draft for our last third round. I mean, a last first round pick, number 30. He could even be there early in the second, which justifies how we move him back into the second. Now he's going to garner some more picks and still get a dynamic playmaker who played at a previous school of Jalen Hurts, who has that pedigree like a Devontae Smith. Alabama and, and Georgia players, just they've been there, done that. You saw Smitty go to the Super Bowl, right, in sweatpants. And we're like, oh, snap. This moment ain't nothing to him. And then not only did he show up in sweatpants, he's the only player ever to have over 100 yards in the SEC championship game and the Super Bowl. He's just built like that. And I'm saying that could carry over in Gibbs' game. I'm just saying. I think both these running backs are great. I think there's a lot of great running backs in this draft. And Zach Charbonnet, Tank Bigsby, you know, LB, like Sean Tucker. I like the Israel dude out of Pitt. There's a lot of good running backs who, with the right team, right, maybe Bijan goes here and Gibbs go here, and Zach Charbonnet goes to a more uh, healthier situation where offensive line, football team is just better. You could see someone like Zach or Tank or Sean Tucker go to a situation where they could thrive easier than maybe a Gibbs or a Bijan. We'll find out in three days. Three days. But it's interesting to see that Peter King thinks uh, some teams like Gibbs better. Now, I think Gibbs' game is great. I think he has more explosive speed, straight line speed, can catch a little bit better. But I'm still going to take Bijan. If I had to pick Gibbs or Bijan, both on the same team who has a better career, I'm still going to go Bijan. But Gibbs is like a 1A, 1B. I think both their games are fine. I can see the Alva Kamara smoothness. With Gibbs' running style, he got some nice cutback too. He's not just a one cut go guy as well, but I still think what Bijan will offer um, just off the field as much as on the field. Now, I can't really say a good or bad with Jameer Gibbs because I haven't really seen or heard him off the field. I'm not going to lie, Bijan has been getting all the interviews. He's on this talk show and this talk show and this talk show. So I think Gibbs does feel a little un disrespected, I should say. I don't know him off the field as much as I do know Bijan, but anyways, 1A, 1B, Peter King could be right. Them NFL teams could be right, or they could be wrong. We'll find out because I'm going to be following these guys' career, whether they're with the Eagles or not, because it's going to be interesting. This could be one of the greatest running back classes. We're not talking like, okay, LT was drafted one time, AP was drafted one time, right? Superstar Hall of Fame running backs. But when we look at this, collection of running backs as a whole we'll see how many who knows three years from now every running back that gets drafted from this class maybe could be starting could you imagine if you see gibbs Bijan, zach charbonnet tank bigsby um sean tucker israel um just a group of guys all starting on their respective football team from this draft we're gonna have to wait and see last but not least Eagles news, according to Peter King. Peter King's been busy this whole week leading up to the draft. An NFL GM told Peter King that Philadelphia loves Nolan Smith. I like Nolan Smith. What concerns me is his frame. He's such a great run stopper in college. Can it translate to the NFL? Can he do that? Can he get off the ball quick enough to get in between offensive linemen at the NFL level? Can he just arm tackle NFL running backs? It's yet to be seen. But the quickness, the pass rush ability combined with how he stops the run, you didn't see a guy like Hassan Reddick who is a great pass rusher. Nolan Smith has been compared to Hassan Reddick. However, in college, coming out as a prospect, Nolan Smith was quicker. Nolan Smith can play 
the linebacker position drop back in coverage better. And I think Nolan Smith was a better tackler or a better run fit, run stopper than Hassan Reddick is. <clears throat> now, Hassan is in the NFL. He's had multiple sacks or double-digit sacks on three different teams. Best year with the Philadelphia Eagles. Can still play the run. I'm talking about coming out of college. Hassan Reddick was a pass rusher. That's really it. Like, he could, yes, he could play the run. But he wasn't asked to do what Nolan Smith does in the run game. But again, frame, size, will that hold up in the NFL? We'll see. Another knock that I got for Nolan Smith is that he's been nicked up and injured two years in a row. So was Landon Dickerson out of Alabama, right? Came to the NFL, injuries went away. Nolan Smith, nicked up at Georgia, comes to the NFL, maybe they can go away, we will see. Um, but where do we take him? Is this a trade back 14-15 scenario? Is it number 10? I understand. I do think that, you know, he was brought in. Every single player that the Eagles brought in was for a reason. Either they really liked them or they know other people like them. And there, there are smoke screens. No if, and, or buts about it. There's smoke screens. But to be brought in shows that the Eagles have either an idea that he's wanted around the league and or they want him. Nolan Smith, Brian Branch, Jalen Carter, B. John Robinson, um, Lucas Van Ness, Peter Skaronsky, Paris Johnson, a D tackle, I can't say his name. Um, who else? Jackson, JSN, right? Like they brought these guys in for a reason, smokescreen or not. But these are the biggest names talked about in the draft. And it's three days away. I can't wait. Do your boy a favor real quick at the 11 minute and 55 second mark. Drop the muscle emoji, right? Check out the dad cap, PTP. Got the fit. I got the snapback right here. Uh, check out all the merch if you would like. Um, Appreciate all the support. Let me know. Nolan Smith, you know, how do you feel? I'm a big Nolan Smith guy. If we get him, I'm going to be happy. Where we get him would make me more happier. At once upon a time, I thought he'd be there at 30. Now I don't think so. So um, let me know your thoughts. Until next time, y'all know what time it is. Appreciate the love and support. Hit that like button for your boy. It's free. It's easy. It don't cost a thing. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Subscribe, ding the bell. And uh, me? Gate City and Philly Fresh are going to be live for the draft. I'm going to see if LB wants to join us. And then we have a little goat talk, battle bird podcast combination. Four people streaming the draft the whole first round. Two picks, tradebacks, draft trades. We'll see. Until next time, you know what time it is. We out.